point is, to me, real estate's freaking easy because I look at this stuff and I go, I know what to do. Stocks, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so don't ever expect meet Kevin to sell you a stock investing course. Thank you so much for considering this course. You are fake news. And I'll explain in this video exactly why I'm a flip-flopping, paper-handed, weenie baby bear clown. Yes, Kevin, I think flip-flopping, paper-handed, weenie baby bear clown is exactly how I would describe you. <laughs> You see, as a former fan of me, Kevin, I can tell you from first-hand experience that Kevin is one of the biggest charlatans and grifters in all of YouTube history. The guy's brilliant. He talks very fast, but he's brilliant, and I trust him, and I like him. Just a few years ago, Kevin was a normal dude selling real estate in California and simultaneously running a totally normal YouTube channel. He would give really good and practical real estate investing advice and most likely made some good money off of it. But as time went on, Kevin eventually got greedy. All right, Kevin, the question everyone is dying to know the answer to. How much money are you making this year? Oh man, yeah. Uh, well, I wish I had a CPA to give me an exact, uh, which that's why we're hiring one in person. There's still so much accounting to do, but uh, it's probably going to be in excess of about 22 this year. No. Yeah. Are you, and you're talking? Are you talking are you about kidding? stocks? Are you Every, counting stocks? No, 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 not counting stocks, like just ordinary income. In fact, so greedy that it has sent him down a path of rabid alcoholism. We're gonna do two on purpose, just for purposes of the test. And being hated by his own followers so much that he has to manually accept comments on all of his videos. So today I wanted to make this video to take a deep dive into Meet Kevin, also known as Meet Scam, and take a look at exactly how he became one of the biggest grifters in all of YouTube history. Here we go, come on, push it, find the dip, find the dip. As I mentioned in the intro, me Kevin initially got his start on YouTube posting pretty basic videos on real estate and real estate investing. But one day he got the genius idea to make a video calling out Grant Cardone. And look, I know a lot of you might be thinking, wait a minute, you just put Grant Cardone's name in the title to get more views. And guess what? That's true. Because look, the very first videos that I made on YouTube for the last six years got no views. They were just clients who watched my videos or potential clients. That's it. Now, if you don't know Grant Cardone, basically he's just the most average core shilling fake guru of all time. If you're down to your last thousand dollars, this, yeah. this offer today is $9.97, grantcardone.com forward slash shark. That's all you really need to know about the guy. And after gaining some fame from these videos, this led Kevin down a path of straight up insanity. Since blowing up from these videos, Kevin has published more than 20 videos on Grant Cardone. Yet, he later went out of his way to take down a YouTuber named Echoes From Above video on him for cyberbullying. Why did you take down my video for cyberbullying, harassment, and threats when all I did was simply expose something that was public information. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think I took your video down for those things. Uh, I um... Which I find a tad bit hypocritical. Publishing more than 20 videos on one person is just ridiculous. And at a certain point, you are just obsessed with that person. If YouTube permanently banned Leafy is Here for publishing 12 videos on Pokimane, which I will admit is still absurd, the 20 plus me Kevin has posted on Grand Cardone should also at the very least be considered to be cyberbullying. Oh. Oh my gosh, here's me, Kevin. He's obsessed with Grant Cardone. Kevin even went so far as to call into the guy's show to try and get some sort of gotcha moment for his YouTube channel. Instead of talking down the small deals where people have leverage, you know, 5 to 20% down in one to four real estate and the wedge opportunities in small deals, which yeah. sounds really familiar, by the way. But Kevin actually decided to take his obsession with clout and Grant Cardone into the real world, where he showed up at the guy's office in a now deleted video, dressed up as an elf, screaming and flailing his arms around like a little child and demanding to talk to Grant Cardone. Unfortunately, the video has since been deleted, but I actually saw this video three, four years ago when it first came out. And I remember just thinking to myself, what the actual f is this guy doing? He got arrested on that day and was charged with a misdemeanor and trespassing all over artificial internet beef that he actually started for no reason. If you want to call the guy out, fine, I do it all the time, but showing up at his office dressed up in an elf costume at the age of 27 is objectively insane. Look at this criminal getting put in handcuffs and smiling while getting arrested. You're not that guy, pal, trust me, you're not that guy. Okay. 
And looking back on it 3-4 years later, although he pretended to hate Grant back in the day, I believe he was just jealous of him. Because Kevin is now nothing but a far worse version of Grant, who provides dangerous, not financial advice, given how much money he's collectively lost his followers, who are deluded into believing that this guy actually knows what he's talking about. It all started to go downhill for Kevin in 2020 when he started posting videos on how to get your stimulus check, which then transformed into him becoming a fake stock picking expert. Here we go, come on, push it, buy the dip, buy the dip. Here we go, come on, push it. Despite referring to himself as the stock doc in writing, Kevin is possibly the worst financial analyst in internet history. Kevin is only rich because of the income he makes off of YouTube ad revenue and shilling garbage $1,000 courses. That is the main reason why he doesn't take down most of his videos of him picking stocks which have gone down 95%. Because although he's most likely lost his own followers tens of millions of dollars combined, it doesn't matter as long as Kevin is making that sweet, sweet ad revenue and sells an extra course or two. And in preparation for this video, I was actually watching one of his videos, Why I Sold a Stock I Like, which is about the stock Tattooed Chef. The video is from March 11, 2021. In the bio for that video, in addition to promoting BlockFi, which is now going bankrupt and holding all of their investors' funds, just like FTX, he actually has a link titled Top 7 Stocks. And Kevin actually promotes this as useful. So I clicked on it. And to no one's surprise, over the past year, this portfolio of his top seven stocks is now down 49%. These are the cream of the crop for Kevin. The best of the best are now down 49%. So that means if you had invested $10,000 into Kevin's personally recommended top stocks just one year ago today, you'd have $5,100. I would hate to see how the top 50 are doing. Now look, the stock market is down. I get that. But it's not down 49% or 99% like some of his other stock picks. So my question is, how in the world is this not financial advice useful to anyone? Plus, how is it not financial advice if you're selling a course giving financial advice in exchange for money? And Kevin might report this video for cyberbullying, but losing your own followers money based on recommendations that you have personally made on more than a hundred different occasions is 10 times worse than any words that alleged cyberbullying could ever accomplish. Now, Kevin's had a lot of bad stock picks over the years, so we'll just briefly go through a few of them. Keep in mind, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This isn't even 5% of the garbage this man has shilled to his own audience. And because Kevin claims that we shouldn't worry about daily fluctuations, we're going to worry about stocks that he's recommended over an extended period of time. On February 8th, 2021, me, Kevin recommended a stock called EXPI. This is big, all right? Grant Cardone. <laughs> is about to 10x a stock Bruh. that I have over $600,000 invested in. Now, I actually worked for this company for a year full time, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, it is literally a pyramid scheme. The company is trash. It's a virtual real estate brokerage where the virtual characters make the metaverse look like it's running on PS5 graphics. And despite Kevin recommending the stock just four days before its all time high, the stock ultimately did not 10x. Instead, the stock is now $10. Mostly because I'm often right. In a video titled Seven Stocks That Could 3X Fast, Kevin promotes a stock called Peloton just two days before the all-time high of the stock. This one makes no sense and it never made sense. Peloton became popular during the lockdowns of 2020 because you could work out from home. But in a normal world, it is nothing but a $1,500 bike that does not even move. And by December of 2020, a lot of gyms were already reopened, further proving Kevin's blatant incompetence. Kevin not only recommended this stock, but actually actually claimed that <laughs> when people think of gym equipment, they think of Peloton. Not the cap. Which as a certified personal trainer at the time, I can assure you from firsthand real world experience, this was never true. Peloton was just a fad that sells bikes that cost as much as multiple years of a regular gym membership. And as a result of that, the stock went down from around 140 to less than 850. I recommend checking out this video because almost every stock he recommends in this video is down massively since he published it. Mostly because I'm and right. On September 24th, 2021, he publicly invested a million dollars into a company called Affirm. Why is Affirm at $125? Why does it keep spiking up and going to the moon?
Unfortunately for Kevin, Affirm is a completely useless company which does financing for things like AirPods and other stuff that nobody except broke people needs financing for. So no Kevin, Affirm is not and never was the Tesla of finance. How in the world is it legal to make these type of statements? The stock is now $9. Mostly because I'm often right. He advertised FUV on June 5th, 2021, a useless EV company which makes these hideous things and I don't even know what to call it, but honestly it just looks like a death trap. Run. The stock has now gone from around $2.25 to now $3 because nobody would ever be interested in this terrible excuse of a motor vehicle. I lost testosterone just looking at Kevin attempting to drive this trash. The stock is now down about 95% since he promoted it. Mostly because I'm often right. On December 8th, 2020, he promoted a company called Nano Dimensions. Title of the video is literally $6 to skyrocket, and now the price of the stock is $2.40. Less than half of what it was when he made this video. The advice that this guy is giving should be against the law. If you had simply just invested into the S&P 500, you'd have infinitely more money than me, Kevin's garbage stock picks, which are all allegedly going to skyrocket or are the Tesla of whatever industry he's talking about and the worst part is the guy has the audacity to leave these videos up like if you're gonna advise your own followers to get absolutely railed in the stock market on video walk them to the slaughterhouse at least have the audacity to delete the videos like there's probably 45 year old men who come back to these videos every now and then and they're like this is the one this is the YouTube video which got my home foreclosed on the reason why my wife left me and why I haven't seen my kids in two years and then they comment how much money they lost as a result of his videos just for Kevin to manually remove their comment. He also recently released an ETF called PP which for some reason he thinks is funny despite being 30 years old which is now down 14% just in the past month and the only reason why he leaves these videos up is because the RPM which is the revenue generated per 1000 views on these stock videos are through the roof so he doesn't even care about how many families he bankrupts as long as he's producing that passive income baby here we go come on push it buy the dip buy the dip here we go come on push it on that note of passive income, Meet Kevin in 2020 actually stole $33,000 from the state of California by applying for and receiving the most unnecessary PPP loan in the history of mankind. The loan was forgiven, meaning that he did not even have to pay $1 of the money he stole from the state. The point of a PPP loan is to pay your employees and interest on mortgages, rent, etc. In this case, Kevin's business is literally just him talking into a camera in these unedited YouTube videos videos filmed in his home and the only two employees of this alleged business are Kevin and his wife. Unnecessary PPP loans like what Kevin stole from the state of California adds to the inflation that we're seeing right now. Sure, in the grand scheme of things, it might not be the biggest deal in the world, but when you put into perspective that this is the same guy that complains about government spending every single time he can, and also that he never needed this $33,000 at all, it just goes to show how greedy and unethical Kevin truly is. Here we go, come on, push it, buy the dip, buy the dip, here we go, come on, push it. In addition to shilling garbage stocks that even a monkey could have selected, Kevin also sells courses, a lot of courses. He sells courses on real estate investing, courses on being a real estate agent, courses on stocks. So don't ever expect meet Kevin to sell you a stock investing course. Courses on Elite Hustlers University, whatever the hell that even is. Courses on passive income through YouTube. So many goddamn courses, I can't even keep listing them off because it would take forever. Now look, there's nothing inherently wrong with selling a course. If you feel you have knowledge that people could benefit from and there's potential for a high return on investment into that knowledge, it makes sense to sell a course. But there is absolutely no value in meet Kevin's courses that justifies paying him around $1,000. None. If anyone on this planet is trying to sell you a course for $1,000, 99.9% of the time, they are nothing but a grifting piece of garbage. Despite previously stating that he would never sell a stock trading course on video, after one year of making a lot of money in a massive bull market, he decided to sell his followers a stock trading course. And here's the fact of the matter, anyone with the knowledge, skills, and temperament to beat the market consistently does not need to sell you a course on stock trading to produce income. 
And these courses, which I've personally accessed a few of them, are in my opinion nothing but recycled content from Wikipedia pages and Google. Can Kevin give useful advice to a newer real estate agent? Sure, 110%, but so can someone on YouTube for free who generates revenue through ads. I sold my first home when I was 19 years old. I never paid any grifters like Meat Scam even $1. Keep in mind, this is the same guy who admitted on video that he lost $3,500 through just fees because he was trying to buy a JPEG of a fucking dog. Some folks who were like, Kevin, you didn't get screwed by Shiba Inu, you got screwed by the gas fees. Well, I did the math and I only lost 25.69% of my $13,777 from gas fees. You can buy multiple real dogs for the price that this genius lost in just fees, all to not buy a JPEG of a dog. It is mind blowing to me that someone would pay this guy, of all people on the planet, money for his alleged knowledge. His knowledge goes so far as to make completely unedited YouTube videos and talking out of his ass and advising his followers consistently to buy stocks that drop 99%. I will concede that he was a successful real estate agent and he's successful on YouTube, but I guarantee a majority of Kevin's income does not come from stocks and real estate anymore. It's selling these courses and YouTube ad revenue. And for someone who used to market themselves as the no pressure agent, he sure uses a lot of scare tactics to be able to sell his garbage garbage products. He's always on YouTube channel essentially saying that the world is falling apart and the only person that can help you is me through my $1,500 course bundle. And he uses the exact same fake coupon high pressure sales tactic that every other fake guru uses. Why in the world is this course 64% off? Here's a random page on his website with three different high pressure sales tactics on the same page. He's now taken his course shilling grift so far that he has deluded himself in into believing that people will be willing to pay $3,000 to be on his overpriced private jet and for the pleasure of finally meeting Meet Kevin in real life. And look, maybe they actually would have been able to buy this trash if they didn't get absolutely railed in the stock market thanks to his not financial advice. Here we go, come on, push it, buy the dip, buy the dip. Here we go, come on. In conclusion, yes, his followers who take Meet Kevin's not financial advice are also to be blamed. I'll admit that. But when you take a step back and look at things from a naive viewer's perspective, these people see someone who's massively successful, who has more than 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube, obviously has a lot of money, and they see someone who's well-spoken and from the outside looking in is worth looking up to. And then they watch his daily uploads for a few months in a row, and that's when they start trusting this guy. Maybe they buy a course or two, and they eventually go bankrupt. And sometimes I sit back and I think to myself, how in the world are people like this with verifiably horrific track records successful on YouTube? I get that Kevin used to be a nice and normal guy. I used to be a huge fan of his back then, but now he is the most stereotypical internet grifter, shilling $1,500 courses and losing his followers collectively millions of dollars due to his not financial advice. And when I think of people like me, Kevin, and his massive massive amount of success, sometimes all I can think of is this video. No, this isn't happening. There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Should I just sell out as soon as I get to 100,000 subscribers, promote established titles, promote FTX, promote BlockFi, promote cryptocurrencies with no actual utility, and join the Ponzi pushing creators agency? Because apparently that is the fast track to success on YouTube.com. It's actually to lack morals and integrity. And we have to ask ourselves, why in the world are these the people that we, the viewers, decide to consensually make rich? Why? There's no good answer to this question and it does not have to be this way yet we still decide to support these people and me kevin has already previously threatened other smaller creators with potential legal action because he was offended meet kevin aka kevin pavrav aka the guy who ran for governor of california is threatening to sue me yes despite the fact that he actually claimed that haters are the best free advertising in writing on Christmas Eve. And unfortunately, I absolutely refuse to be bullied by a man with no morals 
rules, so I would like to say this video is my opinion and my opinion only. However, if Kevin does want to take legal action against me for making an opinion piece, I don't think Discovery would go too well for him, to be honest. And I would really hate if all of those thousands of people took advantage of their First Amendment rights in an open platform where their comments can't be deleted to speak out against how much money they've lost following the financial advice of Meat Scam. Because to be honest, I don't think that would be a very good look for you, Kevin. So I know for a fact you're watching this. Just remember, this is nothing but free advertising, and given the fact that I'm not an overly obsessive cyberbully like Kevin, unless he messes with me, I am done talking about this guy for the time being. I've said what I've said, and I refuse to stand down against someone who consistently loses their own followers so much money. I am more than happy to debate you, Kevin, but I'm coming locked and loaded, so if you're considering it, I would advise against that. And before we end the video, I just want to remind you all, this is not financial advice, it's just advice to help you speed run going bankrupt.